Hello and welcome to this short biopsychology topic video examining the nervous system. For this part of the course you need to know the divisions of the nervous system including both the central and the peripheral nervous systems. Now what this means is that you need to understand both the structure which is the layout of the nervous system and explain the role of each of the components shown on screen now. Okay to begin with you need to be able to outline the structure of the nervous system and the best way to understand the structure is simply to draw a diagram or a flowchart of it. Now the nervous system consists of two main components. You have the central nervous system and you have the peripheral nervous system. Now the central nervous system consists of both the spinal cord and the brain and it's easy to remember because both the brain and the spinal cord run down the center of the human body. The peripheral nervous system on the other hand consists of two separate subsystems. You have the autonomic nervous system and then you have the somatic nervous system. To make matters even more confusing, the autonomic system is divided into two other subsystems and you have the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. Now we're going to explore the role of each of these components during the course of this short topic video. So let's start by examining the central nervous system. Now remember for each part of the nervous system you need to be able to outline its role, in other words what it actually does. Now, as we mentioned earlier, the central nervous system consists of both the brain and the spinal cord. Now, the brain provides us with conscious awareness, and it's involved in all psychological processes, whether it's perception, attention, memory, and so on. The brain consists of four main regions, which you can see on screen now. You have the occipital lobe at the back of the head, which processes visual information. You have the temporal lobes at the side, which process auditory information. You have the parietal lobe, which integrates information from the different senses and plays an important role in spatial navigation. And then finally, at the front, you have the frontal lobe, which is associated with higher order functions, including things like planning, abstract reasoning, logic and so forth. It's arguably the part of the brain that makes us human. You also have the brain stem, which is the part of the brain that connects the brain and the spinal cord, but it also controls involuntary processes this is things like breathing, digestion, things that we don't think about. Now the spinal cord, which is the other part of the central nervous system, uh, transfers messages to and from the brain and the rest of the body. The spinal cord is also responsible for really simple reflex actions which don't actually reach the brain, they don't even involve the brain. And this could be like jumping out of your chair if you sit on a drawing pin, taking your hand away from a hot surface, those types of things. So that's the central nervous system. Now let's look at the other side, the peripheral nervous system. Now the job of the peripheral nervous system as a whole is to relay messages from the central nervous system to the rest of the body. Now the peripheral nervous system has these two main components. You have the semantic nervous system and then you have the autonomic nervous system. Let's start by looking at the somatic nervous system. The somatic nervous system maintains communication between the central nervous system and the outside world. The somatic nervous system is made up of uh, sensory receptors and these carry information to the spinal cord and the brain. But it's also made up of motor pathways that allows the brain to control our movement. Therefore the role of the somatic nervous system as a whole is to carry sensory information from the outside world via our senses to the brain and provide muscle responses via these motor pathways so it allows us to respond to the environment. Now let's look at the other side, the autonomic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system plays an important role in what's called homeostasis. Now homeostasis maintains internal processes, things like bodily temperature, heart rate, blood pressure and so on. Now the autonomic nervous system only consists of motor pathways and it has two main components. We have the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. Now the sympathetic nervous system is typically involved in responses that prepare the body for what's called fight or flight. Now this is important because you're going to study fight or flight further in the biopsychology unit. Now how this works is that impulses travel from the sympathetic nervous system to the organs of the body, which you can see on screen now, to help us prepare for action when we're faced with a dangerous situation. Now the picture on screen highlights all of the bodily changes that occur as a result of the sympathetic nervous system. So to give you some examples, our heart rate increases, blood pressure, breathing rate increase, while less important functions slow down, for example, things like digestion, salivation, urination, and so forth. 
and that's to help us prepare uh, for the dangers ahead of us. The role of the parasympathetic nervous system, on the other hand, is the opposite. It's to relax the body, or it returns us to back to our normal resting state. So consequently, the parasympathetic nervous system slows down our heart rate and breathing rate and reduces our blood pressure. And again, the picture on screen highlights all of the bodily changes that occur as a result of this parasympathetic nervous system. In addition, any functions that were previously slowed down or stopped are started again, so digestion is started again. So there you have it. In this short topic video, we've outlined the structure and the function of the entire nervous system, including the key components of the central and the peripheral nervous system. Thank you for watching this short biopsychology topic video. For more topic videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us on Twitter to keep up to date using the Twitter address at TutorTutorPsych. Thank you.